Great. Um, so hi, everyone. We will start today's session. Um, I already pushed uh, that we did like last week. Uh, we are going to repeat the same uh, session from last week, uh, <clears throat> which is basically we will go through the installation of SQL Server, which is Microsoft SQL Server and MS SQL, uh, uh, sorry, Emma, uh, MySQL. So MySQL is currently owned by Oracle, uh, but still you have community edition that you can use, install, um, and also deploy in production. Um, I also will go into SQL Server. They do have developer and express edition. Developer and express editions are free. There is also enterprise edition. Um, but uh, in, considering IFH, we will provide enterprise edition for free because we get some instances um, for under university license. Um, so um, we, so, after this, if you have any request, um, so this session we will go through the local system installation, um, installing again sample databases that you can practice with. So each RDMS system, uh, irrespective of provider and company, they do provide um, like documentation and also sample databases. Um, so we will go through the installation process and configuring sample databases as well for both of them. Uh, again, uh, we are using Windows today. Uh, uh, for MySQL, um, um, my it's a straightforward process on Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. For Microsoft SQL Server, there will be some variation because Microsoft SQL Server is available majoritarily for Windows platform, and there is some Linux distro as well. Um, but to install on Mac OS, or specifically Microsoft SQL Server, you can also use container or you can use um, parallel installation, like you can use VMware Virtual Box, install Windows and then configure SQL Server in there, or you can use Docker container, um, which provides kind of abstraction and lets you install the runtime environment that you need. Um, so it feels native, but it's running inside the Docker container. And um, um, and then uh, there are other virtualization techniques that maybe uh, we can go into uh, very last session uh, just to um, go through the details uh, for uh, those users. Um, so day six, if you see here, uh, there's a readme file, uh, there's SQL queries, but, but day six don't really need SQL queries because we will go into the um, default and provided sample databases by each of the vendor. Um, <clears throat> so SQL queries, but still you can use it, feel free to run if you need to. Um, the read through will provide you the resources from where you can download um, the free edition for my as Microsoft SQL Server and also community edition for MySQL. Um, so there are the links um, and we will go through each of the link, uh, we will download them or also we will go through the Google search, how to search for the free uh, community edition, developer edition or express edition and how to download that. So uh, we will begin. So this is right now what I did is we are connected to, because I'm running Mac. Uh, so um, Mac has a different interface. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm virtually logging into the remote server. And this is remote Windows server that I'm accessing at this moment that you're able to see and we will install a skill server here. Again, when we go into actual implementation, uh, production deployment, we will be assisting you. This is basically, we will do walkthrough so that you can do local installation on your computer, practice it, um, get comfortable with it, and think about your use cases that you want to implement uh, across your studies or the projects that you have. Um, so Windows Server, we what I'm basically do is um, I'm going to access the web browser, and I will search for SQL Server um, download. Now you can SQL Server free download that also works. SQL Server Express download or Developer Edition downloads. I can do free download, Express Edition download. Okay. Our free is easy word so that it takes you directly without worrying about the naming conventions that they have. So um, now when you search in Google, you will come to this first link. So in Google, 
well, the links that you see when it says ad it's basically advertisement uh, usually those are related and you can access those and go to the relevant place that you want to but um, again majority of time they might not be relevant so you can skip every listing that has ad mention in front of it and then go to the original search result so we are going to click this is original search result on this page so i'm going to click this sql server download now there are multiple options here um we aren't are not inserted into cloud uh, which is azure is microsoft cloud service um uh, if you are interested in it, feel free to um, send questions to IFHIT. We will help you with that as well if you need it our instance. Um, and below that, you will see two options here, developer and experts. Now, why there are two free editions, but why they are still different? Uh, there's a reason for it. Express is very, uh, provides very basic functionality uh, to just practice SQL um, structured query language, right? Uh, just a syntax, uh, how to write queries, uh, minimalistic databases, tables, and all that. Whereas developer edition comes with a lot of additional features that you most likely use in production environment, like uh, integration services. There's a SQL Server integration services, SQL Server analytic services, and SQL Server reporting services. So this gives you uh, the same level of feeling that you will have in Enterprise Edition. So when you practice on Developer Edition, uh, you, you can feel comfortable for your production environment. Um, so uh, this is good to start with, but if you are afraid and very beginner, then go with Express. It's a very minimalistic, um, uh, only you know there are a few components and you can practice uh, SQL Server, um, SQL queries, basically on SQL Server. And then maybe once you're done with Express practicing um, things on it, then you can go back to the developer edition where you can leverage more additional components. The integration service is basically, uh, if you're a project manager, um, integration service, basically you have database in SQL Server uh, maybe what I'll do is I will first put it into download and then installation, and then we'll discuss into the more details so that we save time while doing the installation. I clicked download now. It, it downloaded the exe file. I'm just going to open the exe file and start the installation process. So basic is, you know, it will make all the choices for you, uh, such as the installation directory, um, the, you, you can customize installation directory because you have C drive, you have D drive, and you want to store your databases on drive, which has more space. Um, so, uh, then you should go with the custom, uh, but for basic is basically it chooses the location, default location for you, the instance name and all that, uh, you will get still option to choose your username and password. Uh, but basic by default chooses other uh, default even including the drivers right so there are um so this is a database but when you are using with any other framework such as, such as java if you are coding in java uh, c sharp c plus um, plus um like you know java in and like for android uh, use you get different types of drivers um so again those will be chosen directly by default and will be installed automatically. In custom, you can cherry pick which one you want, like whether you want Java related, C, C++ related, Python related libraries and all that. So you can do the customization. Um, so you can choose either one of it. We'll go into custom, uh, but feel free uh, to do the, the specific one as well, uh, the basic one. Um, and here, this is the location where it's going to install. Um, so you can change the directory, but right now we'll just keep this as a default. But if you browse, you can change uh, to specific drive and the folder that you want to install. Also, it's give, giving you the minimum uh, free space um, uh, that it will need. And also the download size, uh, which will be basically, download size is basically downloads the file from the remote server while doing this installation process at the same time. Um, and then, then it expands to uh, almost around 9 GB. So uh, we will 
click install. Now it's doing acquiring the set of files, which is it's connecting and talking to the remote server, Microsoft server, pulling files and doing its job. Um, so we will let it do. Now we will go into developer edition and some of the components. Um, now it's done it successfully. It's beginning the installation process. Now, um, there are different uh, things here, uh, hardware and software requirements. If you're a very old computer, uh, make sure there are multiple versions. Um, and last time we kind of uh, stumbled upon that same thing. Uh, so if you have old computer uh, and running not Windows 10 or Windows 11, then my, you might uh, go back to uh, some other previous release uh, for, um, for a SQL server. Uh, there are 2016. Um, I would say don't go back too old. Um, uh, 2016, 17, and 19 is uh, majority is same, uh, except some of the uh, differences between um, the running parallel instances, um, uh, then connecting to the cloud services and all that. Uh, but majority, the base of it, the base engine has similar components. Uh, so don't so you can choose 2016, 2017, 2019. This is where installing 2019. You can see the version name here. Um, but if you are going too far back, I will not recommend that uh, because then you will learn that old version. Um, although synthetically there will not be a huge difference, but there is a variation that comes into when you write procedures, um, triggers, functions, and all that stuff. So um, make sure you install like a relatively new version um, because when we install or when we will help you install either within the IFS data center or if it's OIT, it will be new version because you know, the security patches and all that we have to consider those aspects as well. Now uh, you can look into the hardware and software requirement, uh, security documentation, um, uh, the online release notes. So release notes basically tells you what each release contains. So it will more it will give you more details about what Microsoft Server 2019 has to offer you. Um, uh, so you can tweak some configuration parameters, but uh, we don't need to do that. Um, and there's a migration assistant if you have like existing database and then you want to migrate some um, the previously uh, running databases and services, then you can use also migration assistant to help with. Um, or if you have existing installation, suppose you are running Microsoft SQL Server 2017, then you have two options, whether you want to clean, wipe out the existing database and install new one, or you can use upgrade services where it uh, like takes a lot of things into consideration, uh, which is like existing installation, existing databases, and use that to upgrade to the new release. Um, so you can look into that as well. Um, but if, and these are most majority of the services we will help you with uh, when we go into production. Uh, this is for your local installation specifically. So we'll just go into a local installation. Now um, here, new SQL server standalone, that's what we are more interested in. Uh, and that's what we will install. Reporting services. Now, when we discussed like um, multiple services, right? So you have integration services, you have analysis services and then reporting services. Whenever you have the data, then most likely you will be doing a one of the thing or all, all of those three things uh, for your work. Um, so uh, let's actually, I will just begin this uh, so that it uh, continues installing and then we'll discuss the reporting. Um, services. So this is free edition. Uh, I will just keep developer express. Uh, if I do evaluation, I will um, get like 30 day trial, uh, but I'll just keep developer so that I don't have to, I don't have to worry about expiring after 30 days or a month. Now I'll just click next. Remember for the production, we will give you licensed enterprise edition. Um, I'm just clicking next. The downloading setup file, it will extract. Uh, and then it will start installing the setup. Now, integration services that I mentioned, um, the integration service, you have relational database, but you might have also flat files, right? You might have Excel files, you have CSV, TSV, or even database running in some other databases. So SQL Server has 
a service, which is integration service specifically designed to help you um, combine uh, data from different resources. So that, that is the use or primary use of integration service. Now, analysis service is, uh, it provides like a lot of uh, predefined analysis tools for you. So you don't have to like queries from scratch, but it is still limited because you still have to do a lot of drag and drop, um, think about what variables you want to look at um, and all the stuff. Um, but you, st you still get like a nice interface to work with other than writing uh, hardcore queries. Now, the third is reporting services. So just like uh, SAS, um, you have, you know, in SAS or if you're using Python, you have some libraries using which you can uh, create nice looking charts, gra graphs. Um, so the, and the reports, like, you know, the preliminary reports. So you can use the reporting service uh, to do the same thing here. So you also kind of get similar type of interface. We will, we will look into that as well, but those are technically, uh, what are the distinctions um, like, SQL Server integration service to integrate different uh, sources, then SQL Server um, analysis service, which is they call it SSAS, and then SQL Server uh, reporting services, which is SSRS. So these are three services that comes with the enterprise edition and developer edition that you will not find in Express. Here, uh, it checked the all the dependency uh, Windows Firewall is okay for now uh, because we are not going to connect this instance outside this computer. But when you want this as a, a database server and then you want the server talk to outside entity, then you will need uh, firewall rules to allow the server to talk outside this instance. I'm just going to click next. Now here, these are the selection uh, panel where you have different things to choose from. We definitely need database engine services because that's what the database server is. Replication, technically we don't need it, but uh, when you have production instance, it depends on your use case, you might. Um, machine learning services, uh, some of the inbuilt drivers and components you get to choose. Maybe I'll just do that. Um, full text and semantic extraction search, uh, this additional component, although you by default have the basic one, um, which runs without, uh, or which runs based on like uh, internal indexes, uh, but you can also use this additional service. So what I'll do is I will just do data quality service, which um, there are some additional components to it, um, which we will not go into today, uh, and this is service. Um, so we'll just use those feature. The additional things you can choose based on your use case um, uh, and the development requirement, uh, but, if you don't install this right now, you can still install afterwards. It's not something like once you install it, you will not be able to install or configure. These all the options are reconfigurable again after the installation. Um, and um, you can make it as also machine learning server. Here you can see that option, uh, data quality client, uh, which will um, that uh, this most likely you uh, might not use it. Um, uh, you can create uh, some of the services and put this server as a data quality client. Um, client tool connectivities, uh, you have by default some of the integral community uh, connectivity options, um, whether this provides some more additional stuff to you. So these all things um, we'll just skip for now because those aren't useful as such. Our main requirement here is right now, um, the primary database engine, database engine services. Um, and then I just chose this additional, uh, just to show how to install. Um, uh, if you're working with Hadoop and all that, there are the additional connectors and you can choose and install from here. Or you can just do select all and do the installation. Below you will see a root directory. Now you can also change this root directory. You can also change the feature directory um, and also the shared feature directory that maybe your um, two other components uh, services are using um, when they're working along with the SQL server. So these are all um, configurable. You can choose based on your requirement or you can just keep it default. So I just kept it default for now and it will start the installation process. Okay, so um, now 
in the name instance. So this is by default instance ID that you get, but you can also change this and you can have a different instance name. It is definitely possible. Also, it is possible to install multiple instances on same computer, same server. Um, and you can run those instances independent of each other. Um, but in your use case, majority of the time, one instance is sufficient. So uh, your one instance will be enough uh, to uh, handle your requirement. Uh, but just in case you come across the use case where you need multiple instances, uh, you can still do that. Even after the installation completes for this instance, you can run again installation and create new instance. Uh, so that is possible. So you don't miss like um, um, that you can come back to this step again and create new instances. I'm going to keep this as a default uh, MS SQL Server. Um, now, there is an open JRE. This is Java runtime engine. Uh, why it is open? Because when Oracle acquired Java, um, there is still two different versions being maintained. Um, so open JRE is basically open and free to use. So it gives you that option. Um, but I guess it's already installed. I will just keep that option for now. Um, now it's showing all of the services, um, the account name for those services, um, and the startup type. The startup type is basically uh, when, suppose you restart your computer, right? So whether you want those services to start automatically or whether you want the services to be started manually. So this is what startup type uh, defines. Suppose now you chose this manual and later you realize that you want to make it automatic. So whenever a computer starts, so that it starts the service automatically, uh, you can change from the services panel. We'll go into that in a bit and also show you the running services. Uh, so that's what the startup type means. Um, so we'll keep that. Um, now this is also important one. Um, whether you want to keep Windows authentication mode or whether you want like independent um, uh, username and password um, that you want to use to log in. So Windows authentication is now, when I logged into the server, I used some username and like credential to log in. So what Microsoft will do is it will take same username and the hash, sorry, the hash generated for that password and store it into the internal engine for this database. So it's like a shared um, username and password between database and the, your main operating system. Um, and, but if you have a use case where you don't want to have a Windows user, uh, you know, having um, again access to database or vice versa, then you can create independent username and password. So whenever you either choose mixed mode, um, then this is very important. Uh, this is like a little bit confusing because uh, most of the time after you create the account, you forget what's the username. So remember for Microsoft SQL Server, default user that you get is SA, which is a uh, system administrator, um, which is like they should highlight this bolded so that new user don't get confused because after installation, that's become, that becomes a challenge and then user struggle to find out what was my username to access it. But the default user that you get is SA, which is system administrator. And this is where it is written. And then you can add your alphanumeric special character combination password. Right now, we'll just fuse with window authentication. My current user, uh, let's see. Yeah, so it added the, the administrator, um, which is the current user that I'm logged in, credential that I'm logged in with to the server. I'll do next. Um, I'll just keep tabular mode. Um, multi, so if you done like uh, data warehousing and data mining stuff, uh, there's like later this views, um, several configurations that you can use. Also, it's possible to change this up afterwards as well. Um, so we'll just keep the tabular mode, um, which is basically tabular representation of the table um, and instances. Uh, Confuser. Next. Now, uh, 
Microsoft Power Open enhanced distribution of R made uh, available by Microsoft. So now the R we chose, um, that's one of those, the uh, very divided community between multiple technologies. Uh, R is open source, but there is a Microsoft R, which is basically kind of fork of R, but there are some modification that Microsoft did. Um, same goes for any other language. Even Java has the same thing. Oracle has their own instance, and there is Open JDK, which is kind of uh, they started with the same instance, but then because of the people who are maintaining it, there are two different entities. They use slight variations. Uh, same for JavaScript. Same for uh, most of the programming languages. So I will accept the license. I'm just accepting the license. That okay, I agree. In Microsoft, you can use your own R. Um, Next, it is showing all the steps that it's going through. So now it will take us to the uh, Python step. Okay, uh, for Anaconda is a Python distribution. You most majority of you have used Anaconda and IFH data server. Um, IFH data center has Anaconda installed. So. Uh, it's uh, pretty much a nicety that's on the top of the bare bone Python. So we just accepted that. Um, okay, next. Now we, so after installation of my machine learning server right now, let's just do something. Uh, let's see, let's get me the, Let's do this. And okay, I was unable to contact the download server. Now there is a connection issue, um, maybe because of the internet. Let's see, let's click on the link. Because all doing this during the installation server is trying to connect to the, the internet actively you know, to the Microsoft server and download all the required things that it needs. Turn the link, it's still opening. And there's other ways what we can do is uh, because this is not really required service at this moment, we can uncheck and then do the installation without this. So what I'll do is I'll just uncheck that service so we don't need uh, installation. We're just going back the steps to uncheck that so it doesn't end up in that stage. So machine learning component, let's just uncheck this. No, it's going to uncheck the analysis services for now. This computer is running slowly. Sorry, um, I clicked on it. It's just taking some time to perform the action. Let's so, check that as well. It's already installed. It's fine. Um, so slow. Okay, so let's check. Let's just go to the next step. So we basically uncheck the, the things that are necessary. Sorry for the noise. Yeah. 
we, we are going back to the same step that we've been through. Uh, we'll just keep the same selection. Uh, I'm just keeping the same Windows authentication mode. Uh, this is the user that uh, credential with which I logged into the server. Uh, now, so everything looks now it's ready to install. And it's just telling us that we're uh, installing the developer edition and all of this component that it's going to install, instance name and all of this. Um, so I'm just going to click install. So it's while it's doing the installation, we'll go into some other stuff. Uh, um, it will take a while to complete this process. Uh, a lot of components that we'll have to uh, install. Um, okay. So now I also share here the where to download the sample databases, right? Um, in case of MySQL, you will see a checkbox to install the default practice databases. Uh, but uh, in Microsoft, if you, uh, you can copy this link from here, uh, which is like the sample databases, right? Uh, I guess I have to see my screen. So this sample database, you can take this link um, or you can even search for this. I uh, will find sample databases for each year. So what I'm going to do is um, close this. I'm going to the web browser again. I will just type SQL server sample database. Right? So if even if you type that in um, server, uh, like the web browser, it will bring you to this website where you will see the sample databases. Um, so the adventure works is like widely used one uh, and they have this like uh, on very long time. Um, so you can let's go to the installation page. Um, it will show you the prerequisite uh, for different versions. But uh, when you look into this, this is, this is basically backup files that you will download and then you will use this backup file to install um, the sample database. And you will choose this based on the version that you have. So the current version that we are installing is uh, 2019. So I will basically choose this 2019 backup file um, well, for the um, installation. There is a data warehouse related some of the components. You can use that. Uh, mostly we'll just go with OLTP one. Um, and you can also choose the lightweight, which will contain like less um, data rows uh, than uh, large quantity. So let's just do this. I'm going to download this uh, backup file, uh, which is like almost 200 MB. Uh, so, it's, so it has like a lot of compressed data. Um, so we downloaded this. Uh, similarly, you will do this on your local computer. Uh, you can either choose this or you can you create your own um, database and tables, right? So it's a choice really up to you. Uh, but this this is like takes your, uh, so for new user, this is helpful because then you can have the ready-made databases to look into the database structures and then you can practice queries on them. So while it is still going, uh, now the question is, can we install a SQL server, uh, MySQL server on the same machine? It is possible to install multiple relational database on the same machine because they use different port number and different type of configuration. So after this installation, we will also do MySQL server installation. Um, and technically, as they are running on different port, you can use both as a production. Uh, it will not impact anything except if you're using a lot of resources, then your computer might run out of resources and maybe your computer will slow down, server will slow down. Um, but running the instances is not an issue. We can have multiple instances running um, and you can also use it in production environment, uh, which will still be fine. So installation is finished. So remember, we just installed the core database services. Uh, we still have to do uh, SQL Server Management Studio, which pro basically provides the um, interface to work with the, the database engine.
I'm going to close this. It will bring the other screen. Now here you will see install SQL Server Management tool. So this is what another important tool that you will need to work with the database engine. If you don't have this, then you will have to use terminal or command prompt and run all of your queries from command prompt. Uh, for new user, it's challenging. Uh, if you're like a regular user, then it should be okay. I'm going to click on this. It will open the web browser. Um, this SQL Server Management Studio is free. Uh, so you can see here, free download SQL Server Management Studio. I'm going to click on this. Uh, it's downloading SQL Server Management Studio. And once it's finished installation, Now for a new user, why we need this? Um, you have database engine and database services running, right? So to view that, uh, this provides you a nicer interface. That's the, the major use of this management studio. It's like an IDE, uh, but specifically des designed for the Microsoft SQL Server. And while during the installation itself, it will give you option. So, you know, on SQL Server Management Studio, you just click on that, it will bring you to this web page. You just come to the download screen and you click um, download and then you click the installation. You can also search independently in the browser and then you can come to the same page and download it. Now, um, it will also tell you the compatible versions. Um, uh, majority of this time because this is just the IDE, it's a very backward compatible. Uh, so you shouldn't have any issues to work with older versions as well. Um, but uh, if you face anything, then make sure to check uh, the compatibility. Uh, this one should be backward compatible up to 2008 um, without issue. So I'm going to click install. And Microsoft has releases like 2008, 2014, 2010, 2000. 16, 2017. I don't know what happened in 2018. There's no version. Um, and they, they released like 2017, right after 2016. So they kind of break, broke their two year release cycle. And then after that, they released 2019. Um, but anyways, the recent version is 2019. So we are just installing 2019. We just installed 2019 and now we are installing this uh, management studio to have ID for us to work with. I ask a quick uh, question. Um, yes. This is Jose. Um, so you, you, we don't need a license for this. So is this sort of free to everyone or is it sort of institutional licenses? It's free to everyone. So the management studio, it's like an ID and it's free to everyone. Uh, and it doesn't have any license associated with it. Um, and I guess that's why Microsoft made, made it, before it used to like, uh, used to a bundle, right now it's like independent. So I can just go independently download as well. And also in the installation, what they did is they provided as a separate link. Um, so it's a 100% free uh, without dependency on the licensing with the SQL server. I see, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. And then also, um, the two versions that we walked through, which is, right here, developer and express. These are free to download and work with. Um, developer does everything that enterprise can do. Uh, but what Microsoft says is don't use this for your production. Um, and I have seen a lot of people using this for production. So uh, it is possible. But uh, at the same time, uh, as we are in the Rutgers, and Rutgers has, um, we get licenses for free. So we will help you with installation uh, whenever, to, when we go into production or use for production use case, so we will provide you the enterprise license. But for local installation, uh, developer, it's 100% free uh, and it has all the components that we need. Um, so we will go into the installation steps again. It's still continuing related to it. Uh, at the same time, for the MySQL user, what I'll do is MySQL. So MySQL is like a little bit weird. You can type free download or you can type community edition. So community edition is a word um, to remember because community edition is basically means a community of people came together outside the private organization 
to build this. And this is relevant to other softwares as well. Not all of them, but majority of the large um, softwares, uh, specifically the build tools, the programming languages, uh, when it is owned by a private enterprise, there is also community edition. So um, you can type free or you can type community editions. I'm going to do free download. Um, so till it uh, finishes the installation process, um, I will just go into uh, the, the MySQL one and then we'll come back to SQL Server. So it is still doing the process, so let it do it. I clicked on my SQL. Um, now, remember to make sure you see this community word here. Um, and this is will, this will be the same when we help you to do installation in production environment. We will be using the same thing uh, here because my MySQL started as a community edition or open source project. There is no agreement between Oracle and uh, Rutgers C Act. Uh, which we can leverage. So for production environment as well, it will be very much similar to what you will do in your local computer. So we will do the same thing. We'll go to the community download. Um, now here you can choose the small installer um, and then while doing the insertion process, it will download everything from internet or you can just have a bundle. So this bundle, you can take this file, put it in an isolated environment or the internet, uh, the, in, the environment which doesn't have internet and install. So right now this machine has internet connection, so I can choose any one of it, shouldn't be an issue. But just in case, if you are going to install in a machine where there's no internet access, to download this file in a separate computer, take it to your thumb drive or file share and put this file and install that way. So I'm going to download this. Now, you don't really need a login um, to um, download this. Um, right below the screen, you will see no thanks and just start my download. Um, so we'll just do that. <laughs> we don't want to get sign up for Oracle. Uh, so even um, there's a PostgreSQL, um, um, there's another uh, fork from MySQL that has been created after the Oracle uh, ownership. But then uh, I would say stick with MySQL Community Edition because whenever Oracle adds new component to the their enterprise version, they also most likely add those to this Community Edition. So you have like nicer balance um, just in case you have to go into the enterprise component. So the although I downloaded the my, MySQL, we'll come back to this. So our Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio installation is complete. I'll close this now. I installed it. I don't see any icon on my desktop, um, right? So what I will do is um, in your search, just type SQL server or just SQL. Even if you type this SQL, you will see all this uh, four things coming up. Uh, right now, I don't have to touch this. Um, the SQL server profiler, configuration manager, um, or import and export data service. So we'll just go into the management studio. System Management Studio, so starting this Management Studio. In the beginning, it will be slow, but as you go, it caches the components and it will be faster. Now, um, you will see this server name is IFH Training. You can call this as a local host as well. Um, IFH Training, it picked up this name, name by default because if I go to this computer, this Windows computer, uh, if I right click on this PC and look into the properties, so my computer name that I gave to this Windows environment is IFH training. And that's what the SQL Workbench is doing. It picked up that name um, and it's showing that. You can type localhost as well, it will work fine. Ubuntu 7.0.0.1, that also should work fine. Now, we chose Windows authentication, right, while doing the installation. But if you have 
independent username and password, you can do SQL Server authentication, type your username and password, and it will let you log in. Uh, at this moment, I will go with what I chose to do in installation. So it's using, for this machine, it's using administrator user to log into, um, to log in with. So I'm just gonna click connect. And you will see this now, the instance that is connected. So this is a uh, instance that is connected. There's databases. Uh, right now you will see some system databases. We will not touch that. Uh, database snapshots. Um, we're going to snapshot in a bit. Security where you have user logins um, and usernames that you create um, for this instance. Um, you can create users for the passwords and permission within this section. Um, server object, application, polybase. Um, um, these are other components. When you go into production, uh, you will be mostly playing with that. Uh, you, why you need replication or why you need snapshots is basically when you're in production, you want to have backups, you want to have snapshots, and you want to have replication because when something goes down, if something is broken, then to revert back to the working state, you need all these components running. But when you are on local machine, uh, for your practice purpose, you don't need this uh, because if you enable those, it will take the double the amount of space what it needs for your uh, regular things. So um, here uh, now we have this um, uh, this object explorer on the left side, and now we will have query window. Suppose I do click new query. Consider this is like your IDE uh, in, in Jupyter and when you're using Python or SAS. It's basically the same. This is your query window. You can type the stuff. Um, so you can write query on this side. It highlights the keywords, system keywords, that are the keywords within that SQL server uh, and SQL language. Uh, and so syntax highlighting. So it provides a syntax highlighting. It's provides also intelligence. So it will complete, auto-complete the names um, based on the context. So right now it's selected the master database. So when you have multiple databases, you can choose uh, the context uh, within which you want intelligence. So this is like the database that you will select. Or this is basically your current database in which, within which these queries will run. Uh, so whenever, if you are running query, although you saw the database here, uh, but if, if the query is not working, make sure to select your active instance up top uh, to make sure the query is relevant to that specific instance. Or you can use dot notation um, to access and traverse specific instance just from within the query. Um, so this is basically your ID to work with. Um, there's all the these databases. Let's see if we can get uh, that's the sample database that we download. What we'll do is we'll just do the uh, restore database process for that and get the database installed. So the database is on the device, the file that we downloaded. It's a file it should be inside download folder. Users Okay, I guess we'll have to move that file so we can the access directly from here. So so we'll go into this folder. We will go into our downloads. And this is our sample database that we downloaded. We'll copy this and put in the C drive. Um, Sample 
So I just moved that downloaded file to um, C drive just to give, just to find that path quickly. So here I'll go back to the C drive. The C drive. Then sample DB. We'll choose the database file. It will tell you the format that it needs or the file format, which is BAK. Uh, for the at least SQL Server, you will need that format. Um, and whenever you also export um, by yourself, you will have to have that export format type uh, to make sure to work it uh, work with your instance. Uh, it's telling me database name AdventureWorks, um, and it's just telling me other information, the timestamp. Uh, uh, and the restoration location uh, and the file location from which it is reading that file on that. So uh, you can verify backup media. So verification process is basically will check the syntax um, within that uh, file, the .bak file. Um, suppose if you are exporting, uh, you were in a production environment, you are exporting, and then some issue happened. So there might be issue, uh, there might be issue with the file which you'll not be able to import uh, because your export is cut off because of other issues. Um, so verify backup will let you know if there is any issues that this will not be able to import the database, whether you need to re-download it or redo the backup and all that stuff. But at this moment, I'm very sure because we just downloaded from the internet and this is a sample database, so we should be okay. So now it's doing the um, the backup process, backup uh, retrieval process from the backup. Uh, it is successfully completed. Now, this is a sample database that we just pulled into our active instance, uh, SQL Server. Now, this is Adventure Work database, the one that we just imported. You can see all the tables, the sample tables that you um, you you will find to play with. And this is something. Um, it's very uh, nice to have this because you know you can do walk through to each table and see how they are designed. Um, and as you work with application, eventually you will see the pattern how they are designed, uh, which is uh, technically comes under part of normalization. But I, I, your human brain is intelligent enough when you repeat the stuff, it will try to find the pattern and then uh, I'm sure you'll not make a mistake uh, while designing the new table after looking at uh, a few of the examples. So you get these sample tables. Um, I can just drag and drop uh, these names on the editor screen. See, I can just uh, uh, pull here uh, table names. So I don't have to type other table names. Um, you can do same thing for the field names as well. So right now I will choose AdventureWorks database because I want to run queries within the AdventureWorks database. Uh, I can like do this and then I can type my remaining syntax, select star from blah, blah, blah. So um, also you, you, you get in intelligence. So right now what I did is if I just do select from, now, now here I can try typing the name, it will give me intelligence. These are basically column names uh, from within the database and also some of the um, functions, uh, runtime instances that you'll be able to see. So you so just make sure because you want the column name from the table. So you need to have that from first to get that intelligence um, uh, to you to choose the columns. Um, and then also you can do, suppose, um, I guess I chose this employee users as employee history table. Let's see, uh, employees, human resource, employee pay history. If I expand onto that, I can see column names as well. Right? So um, I can drag and drop this column names as well here. So I don't have to type it. And so you, you get like a lot of this, um, easy to work with interface um, just because of this uh, Microsoft Management Studio that you installed. Now, suppose you want to do this without this um, interface, then you will do in the terminal, then terminal is like for the beginners, uh, it's a lot, of, a lot of hassle to deal with. So having Management Studio is always the best idea. You can drag and drop, you get nice intelligence uh, while writing the queries. Um, 
and also if you do you know any typos right it will highlight those that there is some mistake and you need to fix it so it's uh, very intelligent enough to tell you that there is mistake in your query so it will detect that typos as well for you um so that's another intelligence that you get um, um but always make sure that whatever database you are working with is in the current state so that you know that you are working with the database that you want to um so yeah you expand to this you see the tables you can uh, drag and drop the table names the field names you can see the uh, the you know key columns and uh, yeah you can see the how the relationship is built, built between multiple tables also for the starters we, what we can do is you can you know i can do like run query directly from here select top 1000 rows edit top 200 rows right so edit means basically it will let you edit as well whatever the result it spits out um also uh, it will give you um some of the queries that you don't have to type by yourself right so script table as um you can suppose insert query i'm just copying the clipboard i can create the script um and then you can use this to right so i just basically right clicked on it um, I choose whatever script I wanted to design uh, and use so that I can write the queries right away uh, without me going back and forth in documentation site and sorry, um, and then understand the syntax and all that stuff. Now here I will just replace this, you know, placeholders with the values. When uh, suppose it is two, two comma. So you you can like have the syntax just by right clicking on it. Um, so you, this is also a nice city that you get with the uh, SQL Server Management Studio. So all the CRUD operations, like the primary operations that you do, you will be able to get those syntax right away uh, from here within the SQL Server Management Studio. And these are the four major operations that you will be doing uh, throughout your journey. Um, and the analysis part, uh, that's separate. But then uh, this is like the major component. You will be writing queries multiple times, uh, the drop query, um, um, and the drop, you know, table data, table itself, database itself. Uh, so you get all those nice, nice things here. Um, you can also generate primary report. You can do like some custom reports on the table. You can do custom reports on the database as well to see how many tables are there, how much resources being used. Um, and then also um, where it is stored, location, um, what columns it has, and all that. So you can like get some of the default reports right away without worrying about writing it from the scratch. Now, Go keyword is basically just too late. Um, Go doesn't have a significance in terms of the uh, the function. It's just the indicator that it tells. Um, tells the database engine that this is a new line and execute this before you go to the next line. Right? So execute this and only after that you do this. So that's the significance of Go. So Go doesn't have a procedural functional significance. It's just the instructor um, that helps uh, database engine to separate the uh, concerns of execution. Uh, also, uh, you know, scroll bar option. You have multiple scroll. Uh, you can. There are a lot of settings that you can do. I know a lot of people use Sublime Text, uh, which provides you the graph. You know, you can uh, if you are like a lot of long code. Um, I usually use this. It's very handy because you don't only have like this many lines of code. You might have like thousand lines of code, and then to navigate between uh, you know the breakpoints, the the functions. Then you can use this like a nicer uh, graph, graphical view to navigate to those points, and it will let you know where you are at with this like blue line. You can see where your current is at. Um, so um, those are the major things. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just maybe run this query. Execute is running the query, so it executed. So right now it's showing in the tabular form. I can just do also flat uh, page if I execute now. It will show you like the the you know the like a flat document without table structure, and then I can copy this as well, uh, or I can just use the table structure and copy that as well. Um, 
So these are the like uh, primary things. Uh, execute is like you need to execute the queries. You can also store the queries that you are writing into separate files. Uh, when you click save, it will let you save this SQL query as a separate file with the .sql extension. Uh, then you can create new a new query window where you can type new queries. You can save it as well, and you can have this as many as you want, just like your project structure with the multiple files, and you can access those. Um, so, um, so uh, these are basically the components that you will be recurrently using. Um, but feel free um, to you know play around. When you have local instance, even if you break it, uh, it will not affect significantly any other stuff. So this is your chance to like play with it, like within your system before going into the production um, and all that. So uh, what we'll do is we'll stop here for now, and then we'll do the uh, MySQL server as well. So uh, so that we cover that aspect as well, because we just have like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, so we downloaded the MySQL server. So um, this is basically the, the things that we covered. This was for SQL Server and SQL Server Management Studio, which is part of SQL Server to work with the MySQL Server databases. Uh, now we are switching to different RDBMS system, which is MySQL Server. The second largest used database is MySQL Server. Uh, and it had a reason because it was very mature. It is still mature and it, it was open source. There is still open source version, but also when proprietary, which is purchased by Oracle. Um, I'm going to the installation file. I'm going to start the installation of this. MySQL server, it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux, so you don't have to do additional steps. Uh, it's just like uh, click install for all of the three operating system major. There are other operating system as well, but for this three operating system, they definitely have a very straightforward installation process, uh, one click install. Um, you don't have to worry about Docker container. You don't have to worry about you know, virtualization, uh, all this stuff. Um, okay, so now developer default um, server only because if you are using this as a production instance, I will just do server only. Client only if this is just like you know acting as a MySQL client, but server is somewhere else, then this will just act as a client interface. But um, uh, in our case, we will have client and server in same place because we will we will use uh, Workbench which is equivalent of SQL Server Management Studio uh, ID uh, to access the MySQL databases. Full, it will do all everything, custom, then it will take you to the steps. We'll just keep developer default. It will choose most of the things formed by default for us. Um, it still needs this Visual Studio. There's a reason for it and connector for Python. Um, this, yeah, right now, let's see. So see there is a connector, C++, JDBC connector, ODBC connector, and .NET connector. So the programming languages that you use, they use specific type of connectors to connect with this MySQL instance. You know, uh, because all the programming languages are designed differently. So they have like a different requirement. They have different interfaces. Um, so that's why you need this kind of connectors to connect um, to those specific languages or the project design in that specific languages it's very important to have this um, and shell is basically also like a command prompt like a terminal if you're using mac uh, it provides you like a non gui version you can just type the command into the stuff see workbench which is basically equivalent to microsoft sql server management studio it's by default there and also sample databases is by default here. So we don't have to download the .back file and do that all the stuff. And there's a documentation also, which is inline documentation that you can read while working on the MySQL server. So everything is in the same installation. So it's very easy. So I just click execute and it started installing the server. I will install Workbench as well and all that. Um, there are a few things that uh, each database server has uh, different from others. 
uh, but it's really up to you which one you want to use. And also it comes from the experience and the project type that you're working on, sorry, or the team that you're working with. Um, you know, um, you can choose either one of it, it should be okay. In 2017 version, and even 19 version in SQL Server, we came across some of the issues. When you create new users um, and you provide permissions to those new users, it might not reflect right away. So, you know, you, you might like get stuck with that issue where, oh, you said like, yeah, you created the user, but you're not able to log in with the new user. At that point, what you will have to do is you will have to restart your server. Um, and then only it will reflect your on the new changes. Uh, that's something SQL Server had major issues to do with. In Workbench, MySQL Server is a little bit easier uh, and well managed. Now, uh, if you are in database, uh, yeah, there are multiple ways to start and stop service. What I'll do is I will show you the when uh, widely used one. So if you type services, this is specific for Windows. So inside services, um, it will show you all the running services, the one which is now at this, you know, currently in active state and all of those. And what we will do is we'll look for SQL Server. So these are all the SQL Server services, right? So the main one is the SQL Server, which is current instance. So you can restart from here. You can you know, stop pause or restart. And then you will see the startup type is automatic. So the startup type column is automatic. It means when your computer reboots, it will automatically restart this uh, without you worrying about starting it manually. So if I can show you, like I can stop here, it will stop the service. And also now it stopped. Now you can see the, the status change to the start. I'm clicking on the start, it will start that service. So this is like a nicer, simpler way of rebooting your server. Um, you can just do restart as well from here. It will restart your service. Yeah. So this is just in case that your current instance is not reflecting the, the new changes that you did. Uh, you can do that. There's a refresh button here. It's like a refresh. Um, you know, uh, you can just try refresh. Um, and it will, uh, you know, uh, show the things that it should show, but just in case if it doesn't appear, like specifically when you create users and all that, uh, you can just restart the instance and it should work uh, fine. Also, if you right click on this, you will see stop, pause and restart, right? So you can restart your service from here, right within this window as well, but make sure you are on the, the actual database instance, not on the, just the database, it's within that SQL Server instance. Make sure to be on the, the instance, my SQL Server instance, and then you will see these options. You can, uh, you can connect, disconnect, uh, you register and all that. Um, all the stuff you can do from here. Now let's go back to, still installing, okay, we'll let two. For, for MySQL, because it's installing the uh, sample databases for us, we don't have to worry about installing. Um, when you're in production, so, you know, uh, you can monitor your system resources, how much CPU, RAM, disk space it is using. Um, and you can also request, like suppose you see a lot of sluggishness, we will help you to debug IFHIT team is like they're always, uh, we can help you debug if you're working in database and if you see a lot of sluggishness um, uh, with actual instances that are running, um, feel free to contact. Uh, first first of all, maybe uh, you um, all can practice at home on your local machine just by doing this local installation. And then when you are comfortable, then we can uh, help you with the production environment. Uh, to install production environment, just drop an email to IFHIT and we will help you install, it, install and configure it. In, in when it's in the production state, um, the to connect to database, you can either connect from your local machine with the client, 
or you can log in remotely right now i'm logged in inside uh, so you can log into you in citrix environment and we can help you install client which talks to your database server so you don't have to log into database server uh, machine directly to access um system installation ability to manage And uh, so irrespective of whether you're using it for analysis, whether you're developing any product, a web application, a desktop application, you will need a persistent storage. And that persistent storage is your database. Uh, there is no way, no way of getting rid of it. Um, you can use cloud service to store your uh, persistent data. Uh, but again, in cloud, it will be database, some kind of database as well. So for any persistent storage, majority it's a database for majority of application, the web, web application, software application that you see. Um, so they have definitely database is very useful thing. Okay, we'll let it install. Maybe that time we'll just go into, so how to create new user. So in, and this is like SQL Server. I came back to SQL Server. We will let um, this MySQL instance to install the files. In SQL Server, uh, you can right click um, logins. You can create new login. Uh, this is like a new user. You know, I can create SQL Server authentication, provide login name, uh, user one, user two, user three, um, or the name of the, the team member that you want to. You can give them passwords. You can provide them with the roles, you know, uh, based on uh, how much role you want to provide um, and uh, authorization that you want to give to that new user. Um, user mapping, you can also give privileges specific to database. And also on the database, you can go more granular and provide only a specific level of privileges. Um, Securables, uh, not sure what it is. Uh, I guess it's uh, mostly deals with the um, fast functions and procedures, um, uh, but majority will be you will be playing with this uh, user mapping the respective database um, and then the permission within the database, or give them the you know DBA role which has all of the permissions by default to everything, including the creating users and all that. Also, when you have a user, you can enable or disable uh, them so that even if they have a username, if you disable them from here, they will not be able to log in. Um, so you can do all of those things from here uh, in the same window. Uh, so this is a good nicety that you don't have to write a script to create new user. You can create a new roles as well. If you create new, you can create new server role. That role can have like different permissions um, based on um, the permission. So you want to give, uh, when you have web application, a web application has some user, uh, like web application is like a user which wants to talk to your database. You might create some roles and users for the web application and specific instances if your web services and all that. And um, um, use those credentials in, within the application to connect to. Um, so this, this is for the project managers, um, uh, lead members to like create new users and roles um, and to play with. Again, for this, when you uh, guys work with it, feel free to ask questions um, and we will have help you with that as well. So now our MySQL is complete. Um, we'll do next. I just need to configure. I'm just saying it is a development computer. I can make a server, it doesn't matter, but right now it's development because it is practicing. It's asking a port, you can change the port number. Um, by default, SQL Server uses 1433, um, MySQL uses 3306. And these are important. This is the uh, port numbers are like a window to your house, right? So, or door to your house. Um, and IP address is basically address of your house. So this computer, if I want to access database, I have to use this door to access it. So this is like the, uh, very important when you have a remote user working with it or uh, web application or web services or mobile apps interacting with your database. You specify a port number because you don't want your whole complete you know, desktop machine accessible to outside user. Um, you know, they can uh, mess with it. So this port number restricts them to only specific service. 
TCP IP protocol, uh, transmission protocol, IP protocol. Um, that's just the protocol uh, with which it connects. Let's do the next. Again, use a strong password encryption. Um, or you can use legacy because if you want to go backward compatible, then you can use uh, legacy um, authentication mechanism. It uses different uh, hashing mechanism, but the new one is more stronger and it uses SHA-256. Um, at IFH, most of our, all of the web applications, mobile apps uses SHA-256. And the fun fact, the Bitcoin also uses SHA-256. So. Uh, the hashing is uh, one way. So, you know, encryption um, and hashing, there are two different things. Hashing is one way, encryption is like bidirectional, it means anything that you can encrypt, you can also decrypt. Uh, so, that's the only distinction between hashing and encryption. Now, for the root account, uh, it says like MySQL root password uh, means. Now in SQL Server, you saw that SA uh, as a user account. Here it's a root, R double O T. Uh, in SQL Server, it's SA, uh, which is system administrator um, or service administrator, system administrator. Um, so your username is root here. Now I'm just going to do some password. So what I did is like, um, on purpose use a little bit something that I can remember now. Um, now I'm just going to do next. Then the services panel that we just saw from where we started start and stop the SQL server service. This is a service for MySQL with which it will register the service to the uh, Windows kernel. Now I'm going to start this and execute. So now it's doing all of its magic. Uh, you can see the log of the installation as well. And if something goes wrong, you can see and track within this log, something is going wrong. And this is MySQL Server 8.0.29, which is the recent and latest stable version. Um, and always make sure to download the stable release. You might see when you download, there will be like multiple options. Um, some are under development, some are stable release, some were like previous versions. So always make sure to download the stable release, latest stable release. We are done, finished and finished. So next, it will start this service. I can check my, let's See the user that I created to and see if it's working. So yeah, so it's working fine. The server is running. It's about to successfully connect to it. Next, execute. And we're almost there. So now again, we'll go back to services. Now, when I was installing, it did a service, it showed us a service name. So if you look at here. Yeah. So this is the service with which MySQL is running. Now to restart MySQL, I can just do restart from here, stop, pause, and all that. This is also automatic, means whenever you restart your computer, this service will start also automatically. So you don't have to worry about when you're restarting it. Um, so this is ready, we finished, next. I don't know to start. Maybe I'll do the workbench. So it's starting the workbench. Again, workbench is SQL Server Management Studio equivalent ID for MySQL database. Here, by default, it created this connection. Uh, otherwise, you can create new connection here. You can say like, you know, I'm just giving the connection name. It's the same user, root two. 
again 127.0.1 you can do local host uh, doesn't matter username is root password and then i can do test connection so now it's successfully connected because i the username and password correct i'll click ok technically these two connections are the same because they're pretty much connected in the same instance click on it here is your mysql server um so this is confusing a little bit uh, you just have to click schemas to see your database um so when you come you will see this panel um and then to look into databases you just select the schemas it will show all of the databases so these are like the you know the sample databases we installed so this is the sakila i don't know where that name came from um so that's basically the sample database and now you can see also you can see now it's a pretty much similar you can see the columns the type of the columns you know the character length all that you can also do select copy to clipboard uh, create insert update statement so you don't have to write those i can just like what we did in sql server so i don't have to write this query from scratch i get this like you know nicer queries um, that i can just play with um, and then also I can just do select command. It will show you all the results and all that. This is the result panel. This is your like log uh, output, whether it's a successful or not. Um, you can export import uh, files. You can import. You can export and say export and save this data set. Uh, all that uh, from the same panel. Um, so we are actually running out of time. Um, but do the local installation on your local computer. And um, that way, what you can do is you can practice uh, a lot. Um, the more you practice is better because this skills takes a lot of time, a lot of practice and a lot of patience. Uh, it's a sure thing that patience is important for this because um, there's a lot of dependencies. Like, like so, uh, thousands of things may go wrong when you're in production. Uh, so. Uh, you need to know like uh, you know intricacies dependencies that it has so that you know how to resolve the issue but in the beginning we will be ifhit will be providing you support so feel free to ask questions and we will uh, help you with the configuration installation even running queries building indexes will definitely help and we will be happy to help because you know that's what our job is so um any questions for the production installations